They say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Baiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by... L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions. Harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. House warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office. Try something different tonight. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. The city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come home to Stanford. Good Foods Co-op. Marksbury Farm Market. Weisenberger Mill. Your village shop. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Look at here. Look at this monster that was a puppy. And look at look at Magnolia. Everybody's been wondering how she's doing. Look at that little roly poly. They have gotten along fantastically, thank goodness. And you know what? These he is really doing his job. Now, I noticed the other day, I try to watch them when they're not looking at me, and a possum was out here. Now, if he could have got a hold of that possum, that'd have been one pitiful possum. Now she's not quite ready to fight anybody yet. Now the girls, if you look right over here. Now, I, I noticed that Mavis, she's the dark one, is getting really heavy, especially on one side. And the really light colored one, Milkweed, she seems to be pretty heavy. I'm not sure about Myrtle yet, but I'm hoping that we have some babies coming this spring. And other things that happen that you can't really have any control over is our trees, our ash population has really been absolutely destroyed by the emerald ash borer. Now, we also know that it's Valentine's Day. So Nikki and I have been here lately. We've been surprising each other. If she makes the main dish, I make the dessert or vice versa. Well, I'm making the main dish tonight. Now, when you think about romantic Valentine dinners, what do you think about? Well, everybody thinks about goat meat. Is that not your automatic response when it comes to a romantic Valentine dinner? Now, you think I'm kidding, but goat meat is absolutely fantastic. Now, recently we visited with Denise and Brian Martin at Martin Meadow Farms, and we looked at their boar goats, beautiful animals, the best meat in the world. I'm telling you what, it's so sweet and tender. Most of the world is eating goat now, except for us. We gotta catch up. So that's gonna be Nikki's wonderful romantic Valentine dinner. We got some chops, and I don't know what she's cooking up, but we're getting ready to go to cabin right now. Now you want to see what the effects of the emerald ash borer are on our local ash population. Let's walk right over here and I'll show you a tree that has been negatively affected. If you look, you'll see some D-shaped holes where they get in here and they get under and just worm their way between the bark and the tree. Look at the damage they do. There's no chance for these trees to survive. I've got literally probably a hundred trees like this that have to come down at some point. Right now, on a windy day like today, it's not actually good to be out here because these limbs could come down. But I remember seeing the purple boxes years ago. By that time, it was probably already too late to save these trees. But I have lots and lots and lots of firewood. So when we go up here to cook, you're gonna see lots of wood. I see you got on my wood cut. I did, I cut all this, chopped it, stacked it. Look right here. Wow. Look what they do. They get in between the actual bark of the tree and the tree itself. And look at the wormholes they cut. Destroy it. That tree it. cannot survive. Yeah. 
So as you can see, the bark comes off and it's terrible what they do. Ash trees are decimated around here. But as you can see, I've got lots of wood for years and years and years to come. That's right. So it is a Valentine's, Valentine's Day. We got our cowboy hats on, so cowboy cooking segment, obviously. Now we're heating our salt block up. So what are you making? What do you think if you had to guess? I don't know. You well, gonna surprise me? We sat up here all day getting things ready. Now the wind's blowing or the smoke's blowing right now. It makes me cry. I'm emotional. <laughs> it's You're the love. Onions and smoke. I'm feeling love. And you told me what to have ready, and I asked you to come up with a surprise. So if I'm fixing the main dish, you're going to fix the dessert, and we do this right. on occasion. And, you know, it's winter time. When spring comes around, we're going to really get kind of away from the dessert, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Dessert's good. Everyone needs dessert. So you told me to have a pan heated up because you got right. to boil some stuff, right? And remember, you can do anything outside that you can do inside. Just good common sense. Mm -hmm. Watch your temperature levels. You know, one of those little temperature guns, which I have inside, I'm going to get here in a minute that it will really help out to keep your temperatures right. But I do see a bowl of cherries. Right. You see sugar over there too? Yeah. So what do we, you kind of give me an overview so you can tell me what we're doing here. Okay, I'll tell you how we start. I have, what, what, what is it? It's cherry Valentine's love surprise. Is that a yellow cake mix? Yeah. I see where you're going. <laughs> you know I, I'm, you like I, stuff I like that it. Stuff. It's sweet, you're gonna like it's it. It's super sweet, right. no calories. That's right, no Except calories. Except the ones that are right. in the dish. It's cherries, it's fruit, there's fruit. Okay. All right, what I'm going to do first is I have six cups of cherries that six we're going to pull into the pot. Sweetened cherries? Yes, they're sweetened, okay. but I've drained all the juice off and they were in a syrup, but I all drained right. that off. And we're going to put half a cup of sugar, one cup of water, and one cup of whatever your favorite bourbon is. And that's what we're going to start We've with. We've got four roses. Today. Is that your right favorite? One of your good ones. Now, our butter is melting for your cherry valentine delight. Mm hmm. I like that name. You like that? Yeah. And then uh, we have our salt block. What's that for? What are you making? Well, that's for the side. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. Okay. You know how you like different meats. You mm -hmm. know how you like the goat meat. I do love goat meat. Denise has brought us all kinds of stuff. Everything we've had has been delicious. Right. This is from Denise. Let me read you a few fun facts about goat meat. Okay. This is going to blow your mind. 75% of the world... 75% of the world eats goat meat. Really? It's lower in calories, lower in fat, lower in cholesterol than chicken or beef. Three ounces of goat has 122 calories. Three ounces of beef, 179. I still like my beef. I'm going to eat my beef, but on occasion. Sounds good. Listen to this. Three ounces of chicken has 162 calories. So 122 versus 179, 162. It has one third of the fat of beef, only 0.79 grams of saturated fat. Uh, beef has three grams and chicken 1.7. Goat meat does not contain any growth hormones because the USDA has not approved their use. And I know about Martin Meadow Farms, they're doing everything wonderfully. They have nice, healthy critters out there. Right. Let me tell you what, I'm gonna take some chops. I'm gonna make a pesto, just add a fresh basil, fresh rosemary, a little bit of oregano. Yummy. A little bit of garlic, mm -hmm. mix that up, chop it up, and put that in some olive oil. That sounds good to me. I'll start my fire with ash, all this ash I have, I'll burn it down to ash, mm -hmm. get some nice coals, and then I'll bring the hickory on for that savory, wonderful smell. Yeah. Then we'll put the goat right on top of that. You're getting close over here. Now yours is going to take longer than mine. Right. So you've already got your butter almost melted and you've got a yellow cake mix. I see where you're going that's here. That's all that's left. I Very have easy. no power against this. Okay. You'll There's eat nothing it. nothing I can do. Right. Now, 350 degrees for a 12 inch pan. What does that mean? How many on the bottom? How many on top? You know? I'm not sure, 17 on top, eight on the bottom. I read my book. That's 350 degrees for a 12 inch pan. Now, we've got our charcoal briquettes uh, going over there. We're gonna take that over there. We'll finish up right over top of here. We'll get it nice and level, set our briquettes out. And then we have a visitor coming very shortly who's gonna tell us about a restaurant coming that has a unique concept. But let's get set up. We're almost done with your boil here. Let me get your charcoal briquette set up, okay. and we'll get to move it. Thanks. All right, on a windy day like today, these tend to burn down a little bit quicker. So you might want to beef it up just a bit and always check. Now one thing you want to keep in mind 
every now and then. This is only gonna go for about 40 minutes. Pick that top up and just slightly turn it around. Make sure there's no hot spots. Ensure that you have a evenly cooked cherry valentine delight. Nikki has moved because, as you know, smoke follows beauty, and it was just attacking her. It avoided, oh, that is so sweet. It avoided me at all costs. It's found as Okay. Like, but the smoke was avoiding me at all costs, going right in her exactly. face. Exactly. That is what so sweet. What can I say? It's Valentine's Day. Aww. You know what, Nikki? I'm kind of surprised. Usually it's Valentine's Day. I did see a heart on the door. I can tell Carolyn's there. Yeah, she has. But I figured you'd have more stuff out. Well, don't you have to go check the dogs? Oh, so I have to go away. Yeah, you have to go away for a minute, and I'll have everything ready for well, our nice dinner. Right now, I've got to watch our stuff. Okay. But I will go away in a minute because I do have to feed the dogs. But um, it's time for Shannon. Nice from girl. From Danville. Mm -hmm. Now, if you remember where Mermaid's Restaurant, I think they had one of the best steaks in the world. They did. They're not there anymore. But they're getting ready to open the doors here before long for a pay-what-you-can type restaurant like John Bon Jovi has up north. That's nice. Let's talk to Shannon. Shannon Collins. Tim, nice to see you. I told you. folks earlier, this is going to be like this southern. You've got everything I that do. you need to make a classic southern yummy. I'm just pointing out, just, just, just listen to this. This is all coming together on one plate. It is. What's this? We've got some cornmeal cakes, corn cakes. I'm right there. You, mm -hmm. you had me at that. A little bar barbecue, barbecue, pulled pork barbecue. Uh, Kentucky Proud beer cheese, fried banana peppers. All on one plate, need? all at one time, <laughs> one right time, there. One time, one time. Where did you come up with this idea? This was actually an idea I did for the Lexington Women's Chefs Dinner Series over at the Lexington Diner. And I would say it was a hit. It was a hit. How could it not be? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. That's the great thing about cooking is there are really no rules. That is true. If you like it and can think about it and, and combine these flavors and tastes, why didn't I think of that? Well. You didn't tell me. <laughs> Next but time. Now we know. That's right. <laughs> now I see on your uh, shirt, Grace Cafe. I just happen to know that there's a new gig coming to town very there shortly. It is. It's tell very us exciting. about that, if you will. Um, Grace Cafe is going to be a pay what you can community cafe. Cool. And what that means is basically, if you have a little bit extra money, you can pay a little extra for your meal. If you don't have too much money, you can pay what you can. And if you have no money, um, we're happy to serve you, give an hour of service. And it's meal. going to be good food. Excellent food. This kind wow. of food right here. Oh, man. Now, what we've got, you've taken your corn cake and you've put in some beer cheese. And like that's not that's right. it enough. I'm calling this bluegrass <laughs> nachos. Bluegrass nachos, I like <laughs> it. Then some barbecue. And then basically, what is what is your batter on these right here? The Weisenberger fish batter on those. Uh -huh. And what do you call these again? I call these bluegrass nachos. <laughs> Now, Grace Cafe, Grace Cafe, this is kind of a, a national idea. I think John Bon Jovi is kind of That's right, up, up in New Jersey, Red Bank, there's a Soul Cafe that's pay what you can. Wow, yeah. so folks come in for some good food, good some quality really good food. food. And regardless of their, what they do for a job, how Correct. much money it they make. it breaks down all the socioeconomic barriers with and good so food. And so if you have a big wallet full of cash and you want to help the next guy coming in, mm -hmm. I like the concept. I do too. Now look at what you're doing here. That is just a beautiful, like beautiful idea. Appetizers, snacks, anything. Is that going to be on the menu? It could be a special. It could be a special. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is special. Now, on the side here, you've got something over here. I'm going to go ahead and give you some tips. Turn that on here. Now, let's, let's talk about the fact that uh, you've already put this together. It's a nasty day outside. If you listen real quietly, you can hear the rain on the roof. But what is this? Well, this is um, Brussels sprouts, shaved Brussels sprouts, uh, red delicious apple, with a little bit of Brussels sprouts and yeah, apple, apple cider like vinegar, and we're going to add a little bacon to that because bacon doesn't hurt anything. Now, explain to me how you put this together. All right, what I did, I had some Brussels sprouts, okay. and you can either use a cheese grater, you can use a knife if you got the skills for it, or a mandolin. <laughs> Slice those. Don't slice your finger off. Don't slice off. your finger off. I've we done don't that. want human parts <laughs> in our meal. I've done that too. <laughs> hey, you can do this at home. It's really easy. I got a <clears throat> bag of the Brussels sprouts at Kroger. Gotcha. And I just added about five apples sliced up, about a quarter to a half a cup of apple cider vinegar, and about a half of a pound of bacon. And that's it. Just that's combine all. all these. Just simple good. That's where I'm. And look what we got here. You know what? 
I've seen the things that you put out. I want you to put that out there. Okay, you got it. Because you're the artiste. <laughs> Now I ran into you cooking on a big green egg. We did. And we got to talking, and you had some lamb, and I had some lamb. And I got to looking at your lamb, and it looked better than my lamb. I said, <laughs> I said we got to get you on the show. And it took I a while. It. it took a while. No, I love your show. I think it's fabulous. Well, we're having so much fun with it. It and brings we awareness. we love to share ideas like this with everybody. There we go. Look at that. Snacks. Grace Cafe is going to be in Danville. Grace Cafe will be in Danville. It's going to be opening. We are hoping, hoping for a summer opening. Um, we're going to be located at the former Mermaids building. Very good. And you can have stuff like this right here. We'll have things like this. We're going to have a daily, weekly revolving menu. So whatever the farmers bring us mm -hmm. is what we will put out, farm to table. Oh, well, welcome. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Now we'll see if I can get all this on one fork. One bite. Wow. That's just super. All right, let me, let me, let me repeat what she did here. Classic corn cakes with beer cheese. With beer cheese. Then barbecue. Right. And deep fried. It's as if we took, you know, the Mexican nachos, Kentucky fried it, <laughs> and deconstructed and rebuilt it into our own state nachos, bluegrass. Oh, my God. Oh my. It's good stuff. It's good oh stuff. Oh my. One more time. Grace Cafe. Grace Cafe. Danville, Kentucky. Danville, Kentucky. Look it up on a computer. Coming up this summer. Come on down and see these guys. Please do. Pay what you can. Mm hmm. So you had a big payday? Give us a little extra. If you just sold a bunch of chickens? Give them a little extra. Right. If you don't, what come you on can. out anyway. Right. And get stuff like this. Please come. I'll be there. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Happy to see you. Now, here's what we've done. We've taken a little fresh oregano, fresh basil, fresh rosemary, where have we seen this before, and some garlic. Let's just finally cut that up. It doesn't have to be real terribly fine, and we're gonna put that, and if I had to guess, I would say, oh, a tablespoon of, of rosemary, two tablespoons of basil, ta big tablespoon of oregano, and three cloves of garlic. And we don't have to make this you could put this as a food processor, but obviously we don't exactly have a food processor out here. We're gonna mix that up in olive oil and just make a little pesto out of it. All right, while you're cutting and chopping away, look at that. Yum, that looks look delicious. That. Now this is the kind of thing that I love to put right on the open fire, right on the open flame, right over the top of the hickory, and then just pick it up and just eat it. It's just That's delicious. Wonderful. Look at that, look how lean that is. These are young goats that are so healthy. There's absolutely no smell to this meat. It's absolutely sweet. If you're not trying it, you're missing out, and that's all I've got to say about that. I'm gonna go ahead and start with a little salt, a little pepper, a little bit of salt on it, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a little tiny bit of the Cavender's Greek seasoning on it. This has some amazing flavors in it. That's good seasoning. Uh, like I'm gonna that. put that on both sides, and while we're what approaching, oh, that looks perfect. That looks beautiful. Now we're gonna take that and just basically put that in that little dish. Okay, there you go. Now look at there. Look at those wonderful flavors and the smells coming out of there. Then we're just gonna mm. take our olive oil and we're just gonna drizzle that over it until it's thick enough to make a paste. I love cooking like this because you have to coordinate and mm -hmm. try to get everything to come together at the same time. And the smells. Oh, the smells. Mm. Except for the smoke. Oh, which yeah. has got in only your eyes. That's right, it's coming to me. Smoke all this beauty. <laughs> That's so, so sweet. we got everything rolling here, but let's take a break for just a second. A few weeks ago, my sweet little mom, who is a poet. Yes, she is. She's won all kinds of awards on a state level, I think national level, and people really love mom's poetry. I knew they would. Yeah. So here's another quick one from my mom. Music on the place. Granddad would lift his fiddle from a dark and battered case while Dad would tune his guitar. There was music on the place. My uncle played the banjo and he set a lively pace. The neighbors all came running. There was music on the place. They played on through the evening, a smile on every face. How happy these occasions. There was music on the place. The old house now is silent, just lonely, empty space. Only memories bear witness there was music on the place. Oh, you must be beautiful now. <laughs> I don't feel pretty. <laughs> you look pretty. Well, thank you, love. You have to say things like that on now, does it? You, no, but you just say, you what, feel you, sorry for you me. say what you feel. You know, um, Mom, 
doing her poems. She's, she's so does, sweet. She does such a good job. You know, and entertainment. A lot of people don't know, but we do some of the music on the show. We sit down in our studio down there. You play some keyboards. I play some instruments. And we try to do as much of the background music as we can. And our little homemade jam show that's over on KETKY, it's getting a makeover very shortly. We're turning that into a stage show. And looky there. You see where that's I'm going good. with this? Not now what I'm going to do when it's time, we've still got a few minutes because you got to get that going. We're going to melt some butter okay. because we're going to turn these over, let them get good and hot. And we're still going to be rare. And then last minute, we're going to drizzle some butter with the cavenders on it. Yummy. On top. Oh my. And you wondered why the salt block is heating up. I'm going to take some spinach and onions, put on that, mm. roll that over. Good side. Bam. We got our baked potatoes over here and we got us a full meal. Sounds good. I'm hungry. If we only had some music. You know what? You don't have to worry about it this time of year, but these two guys, they hate snakes. Good, I do too. They I like it. They hate snakes. I hate snakes too. They so hate them worse. You sure? Yeah. I, lo I love this song. <laughs> I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And, and we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brother. Got a frog in my throat. I was born in the South, raised on a farm. Summers was hot, winters was warm. Work was hard, but my first time went hunting and fishing with an uncle of mine. Almost drowned when I was a kid. I was scared of water that was over my head. Biggest fear that I never overcome. I was so afraid of snakes, it's hard to have fun. Yeah! I hate snakes. They'll bite and kill you for goodness sake. Ain't but three things I don't like about the South. Copperhead rattles make cotton mouth. Well, me and my uncle catch fish so fast. Throw them in the boat, catch another and then laugh. Knew I was in trouble when I heard my uncle cuss. Cotton mouth crawled in the boat with us. I couldn't swim and I wouldn't jump in and I wasn't gonna stay in the boat with him. Prayed for strength to my heavenly father and that's the day my uncle saw me walk on the water. Yee eat snakes, they'll bite and kill you for goodness sake. Ain't but three things don't like about the South. Copperhead rattlesnake cotton mouth. We'd go bird hunting, turn loose the hounds. Ride an old mule, stay off the ground. One day I got off, was opening the gate. Stepped on a dag on a rattlesnake. Now the mule broke and run, I did too. I was running barefooted, run plumb out of shoes. All I know is I had to leave that place. Past that mule, you all saw his face. Yee haw, eat snake, they'll bite and kill you for goodness sake. Ain't but three things don't like about the South. Copperhead rattlesnake cotton mouth. Well, me and my uncle deer hunting one day. Mother Nature paid a little call on me. Dropped my britches, leaned up against the pine. The saw bar struck me on the behind. I couldn't run and I fell instead, and I knew I'd been bit by a copperhead. My uncle found me passed out there. He thought I'd been mauled by some kind of bear. Yeah, eat me. They'll bite and kill you, for goodness sake. Ain't but three things I don't like about the South. Copperhead around me, cotton mouth. Looks nice. Now, I flamed that up right at the last to get that last seal in and that butter flavors on there. Yummy. But it's still pink in the middle. Now, it's yeah. absolutely wonderful to pick up with your fingers. We can do that when we're outside. Oh, that's good. Mm. Mm. That's delicious. Yeah, wonderful. Mm. Very good. You did yourself that hickory? Mm hmm. You would think there'd be a strong taste. No. Delicious. Do you like my decorations? I love it. You know I'm my weakness. You make that cherry crunch dish and this is kind of like that. You have to eat your dinner first. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm getting that. Mm. Now that our carnivorous habits are put aside. That was good. Look what we got going here. Look at the steam come up, the smell. Really hot. It's good. Mm. 
Wow, that's really good. Mm, this has been a nice Valentine, thank you. It's probably a good time to tell people about our Facebook page. Check it out and like it, see where we're going and what we're doing. Also, check out our YouTube page where you can view our shows. Check out our website, timformerscountrykitchen.com. Before I take this huge bite, though, we should probably say it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. Mm. I'm alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to Furniture World Superstore, Kinco Farm Fence Supplies, Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. Funding for Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen brought to you by L81 Bottling Company. Taste, love, and share the tradition. Harvest Energy Solutions, harvest cabins when you absolutely have to get away. House warmings, meeting all of your outdoor living and fireplace needs. Kentucky Sheep and Goat Development Office, try something different tonight. Rose Farm Supply. Family farming and commitment to our customers since 1982. Salt Rocks, the flavor of life. Woods Equipment Company has every tool you need to make working the land as rewarding as hunting it. The city of Stanford, Kentucky. Come home to Stanford. Good Foods Co-op. Marksbury Farm Market. Weisenberger Mill. Your Village Shop.